The Friday Football Frenzy, sponsored by Foundation Solutions. Welcome into week three of Friday Football Frenzy. At this point, we're beginning to get an idea of Absolutely. what teams are going to be towards the end of the year, but still a few tough tests before conference play. One of them out at R.L. Dalton Stadium, home of the Reynolds Rockets. Always a tough non-conference slate for Shane Laws and company in this season. No different. The Rockets have split the first two games. Now they get East Forsyth. The Eagles, one of the top teams in the state, led by North Carolina commit Bryce Baker at QB. And here's why Mac Brown wants him. Second quarter, smooth as butter as he hits Jalen Murray in stride down the sideline. 56 yards to make it 28-0 East for side second quarter. Baker back at it. This time finding Jerry Richburg coming across the middle. He shakes some rockets and waltzes in 35 Nada, Reynolds gets on the board right before halftime. Eli Hamrick buying some time in the pocket, sees Max Guess behind the defense and airs it out for a 54-yard strike. That makes it 42-7, but Rockets fall tonight, 49-14. Let's head on out to Guy Inslee Stadium. T.C. Robertson hosting Smoky Mountain. Pick it up late first quarter. The Mustangs punting, but Tariq Seibert breaks through, gets a paw on the punt. It doesn't go too far. Rams with good field position. The ensuing drive would bleed over into the second quarter where LaRon Mills finds Joe Mardarity for the five-yard touchdown straight. TC leads 14-0. Ensuing Mustangs drive. They're going to the air. However, Sherrard Gilliland happens to play for Robertson, and he's the one that catches Jarek Jones' pass, returning it deep. A block in the back would take it back a few yards, but it doesn't really matter because a couple plays later, Cohen Bohannon takes the pitch and races through for six more. TC, a big winner, 49-7, handing Smoky Mountain its first loss. Head off to CE Weatherby Stadium, Tuscola hosting McDowell. Titans seeking their first win. 23 seconds before halftime, Mountaineers quarterback Jet Bartley fires to Elijah Pruitt. He splits two defenders, then zips to the end zone for a 34-yard touchdown. 14-6, nears at the break. In the third quarter, eight and a half left, Bridger Jones walks in for the easy one-yard touchdown to stretch it out to 21-6, Mountaineers. And then just four short minutes later, Tuscola back in business. Bartley this time going to take the top off the defense, unloading to Bo West for a 44-yard rainbow. Oh, how'd it go? We're six <laughs> points at the end of the rainbow. What are you Tuscola doing? Tuscola goes on to win 28-6. to Their next game against Swain County and Bryson City next week. I'm not even going to entertain an accent. Rivalry <laughs> game in Madison County with North Buncombe. Blackhawks get the opening kickoff, and Kingston Denson Takes it up the middle, almost untouched, unscathed, all the way to where the cribbo. North Buncombe 7 0 right out the gate. Moving to the second quarter, Q2. Blackhawks up 14 zip when QB Les Otis rolls left and hits Devin Hyatt wide open in the end zone to make it 21 0. North Buncombe Patriots would get on the board. Check this out. QB chance Penn Landwood uh, will keeps not it. go down. <laughs> Looks like he's stopped, but pitches it back to Dallas Barlett, who would take it all the way for the touchdown to cut the lead to 21 7. But the night would belong to the Blackhawks as they roll on to win 42 14. That was one of the oddest plays I've ever seen. <laughs> Inca's first game at home this season, hosting Rosman, who's looking for their first win of the season. Opening possession for the Jets. Logan Trantham to Graham Cannon on the crossing route, and Homie starts running oh, near the Tiger man. red zone. That leads to our first score of the game. QB1 punches it in a few possessions later. It's still 7 0. Rosman's night, much like this. It's a fumble. Inca's Caleb Weaver snags it midair. Jets win at the Cribbo, 51-0. Other scores, Asheville led Lake Norman early into the fourth quarter, but they end up falling 32-15. Christ School battled AC Flora down in South Carolina. The Falcons take that one, 36-21. And Thomas Jefferson Classical notches its first win, beating the South Carolina Spartans 21-zip. 2-0 Falcons of West Henderson hosting 2-1 Murphy Bulldogs. 13-15 Murphy lead, final seconds before half. Bulldogs driving, fumble, Jackson Mills scoops. Mills will eventually take it into the end zone. Falcons have the advantage going into the break. Now the first Falcons possession of the third, Cade Young is going to go yard. There's a lot of Ds in that yard, thanks to it's Marvin It's yard! Bartha. Yard! Zach McMahon on the other end. He collects scores. Falcons patting the lead 27-15, but Murphy not finished. Still in it in the third when Will Shore takes it long on a huge gain. That would set up Cameron Klim on the TD. 
Murphy then going to go with the onside kick. And they are going to recover it. Cadence Leatherwood breaks it. He fumbles. The refs see him as down. So Murphy retains possession. They score later on. A whole fourth was left to be played. Murphy ends up the winner, 36 to 30. Murphy was one and one. They're now two and one. That's me, my bad. Gotcha. Robbinsville hosting Mountain Heritage tonight over at Big Oak Stadium. Black Knights get things rolling first as Roman Jones takes the feed, making his way for six way down the field, 7 0 after the point after. Now, the Cougars are going to answer with this guy, Brandon Quinn, one of the top quarterbacks in Western North Carolina from inside their own 45, breaks a few tackles and just keeps on running. All alone on his way to the house, the Cougars missed the two-point conversion, trying to make it 7-6 to six, Robbinsville. The Cougars would end up taking a tight one out in Big Oaks tonight. Your final score, 28-13. to 13. Stick around. We've got more Friday Football Frenzy coming back as we send you to break with a few other scores. Appreciate that, ladies. Well, if you've seen the Irwin Warriors play a game on Friday night over the last three years, not many players make more plays than Judah Dayton. But this season, he and his band of brothers are playing with a new purpose. News 13's Ed DiOrio has the story. Football. I've played football since I've been in kindergarten. Has been a family tradition for as long as Judah Dayton can remember. My brother was playing youth league football. My sister was doing youth league cheerleading. And me and my family, we'd all go and we'd spend like the entire Saturday at the sporting events just watching everybody play. Judah's dad, Craig, made sure that football was a part of he and his brother's life from a young age. If you get crowned, you knock them off. When Judah got to high school, he started turning heads early. He battles every day with a, with a great mindset. He led the Warriors in tackles as a sophomore. Team leader, captain. The work ethic and his fight, it's unmatched. And his dad was there to see it all. He'd come to every seven on seven game, every scrimmage, almost every practice. But Craig didn't just support his sons. He actually would announce for our JV games. Number one supporter, he's our max preps guy on Friday nights. He's just always been there. Until he wasn't. So. How it happened was they found a spot on the back of his knee in February. In 2023, and Craig found out he had metastatic melanoma, a skin cancer. Like in the summer, they removed the spot and they were like, oh, it's gone. Judah continued to lead the Warriors defense through his junior year. That was until a familiar opponent came back. Like October, November of last year, where it had spread into his lymph node and he got really sick that time and then they found out that he had had a, a tumor grow on one of his lymph nodes that was pretty much shutting down his body. Craig has been battling stage four melanoma since. You know get a text out of practice be like oh your dad's at the hospital come see him you know. But in 2024 it's not about Craig supporting the Warriors. And, you know it's just a small you know token to show him we're always thinking about him. He's tough they're a tough bunch and they're fighters. I, you know, get the news that my dad has cancer and they just surround me with love and support. It's amazing to know that it's not just because I play football, but because we're friends or because they actually love me and I love them back. And cancer hasn't stopped Craig from missing Judah's senior season so far. He still comes to our games, but I mean, it, it's a load to, to him. I mean, last game he showed up in a cane or with a cane because you know it's just hard for him hard on his body but watching him battle through it you know makes me want to battle through life battle through football battle through pain and everything you know? now the game that his dad got him into has a new meaning there was a new reason why i i'm going to train harder a new reason why i'm out here instead of getting through practice it's more utilizing practice to get better to to show him something before he's gone, you know, to, to make make something of myself before he can't see me. So uh, I, I love him. I love you, Dad. And uh, 
I thank him for everything I can. At Irwin, at DiOrio, News 13. Great story there. Judah and his Warriors visiting Brevard tonight for the Friday Night Rivals game. Irwin clicking early. Sophomore Caden Engel operating from the 13 has the wheel route. Finds Milky Ray for the touchdown. Warriors lead 21 to 6. But the Blue Devils battle back. Benjamin Kessinger on the play action. Fools everybody rolling out to the right. Tossing to Henry Ogle. Just like that. We're tied at 35 after the two-point conversion. But Irwin houses the ensuing kickoff, looking to ice it now. Early fourth, Engel hits Michael Petty on the tunnel screen, and he's going to do the rest. 84 yards for six points. That makes it 49 to 35. Irwin ends up a winner and a barn burner, 56 to 42. Hendersonville fans ready for some week three action. Third quarter, it's 40 to six Hendersonville. East Henderson attempts to pass, balls fumbled. It's recovered by the Bearcats in the end zone. It's 46-6. It's the first loss of the season for the Eagles, so they'll be okay. But today, when the Bearcats away, final 46-6. Owen wearing stickers to honor UNC quarterback Max Johnson, son of alum Brad Johnson, as they visit North Henderson. Max broke his leg, opening their season at Minnesota. Mason Gasperson with the keeper fights across and scores 7-0 North Hendo. Second quarter, Owen tossed to Hayden Burpo, Burpew, ah, stays, Burpo. Burpo stays on his feet and scores sevens all around. North Henderson hands off to Parker Willis, goes to the outside. He scores, making it 14-7. Willis had 173 yards and two touchdowns on just 12 carries. And the Knights show up 36-6, the final. All right, Pisgah heads down to Hampton, taking down the Bulldogs 35-0. That mascot looking eerily similar to Gonzaga's. But uh, behind three touchdowns catches from Jake Lowry, I guess you could say he's got so many catches. Call him Jake Lowry. I dig it. <laughs> I'll roll with it. East Rutherford, no problem at Newton Pond over 62-15. And RS Central rolls over Wilkes Central 52-20. And they call it the Battle of the Nations. Choctaw Central of Mississippi traveling eight hours to the Cherokee Nation, a special game that brings two nations together. First quarter highlights here. Choctaw QB Elias Bell finds Tyrus Stokes for this 24-yard touchdown strike to put Choctaw on the board early. 7-0 Warriors. Braves answer back. Jonathan Saylor keeps the skin and comes for our WLOS photographer, Rash. Stay there. He's coming right at you. But Choctaw heading back to the Magnolia State. 26-13 winners. All right. So we're about to get into conference play. Some teams separating themselves. Some teams have played really brutal schedules. So quite frankly, don't know what we're going to get out of them. App State Clemson, 8 p.m. Saturday.